Willkommen in einem anderen Aufregens Video. Or welcome to another exciting video. This is the 60 mile Debian series and in this case I will be covering artillery. What are they good for? How to use them? And what are their restrictions and some possible tactics when playing larger games? Unlike uh, NLFs or non-linear fortifications, I had little difficulty in answering all my questions from the rules concerning artillery. But what I did not realize when I originally started was how spread out the rules for artillery were. I assume this is a result of the organic development of the rules, which is understandable. There is nothing more annoying than seeing the next version of the rules that are so different, you are forced to do an in-depth reanalysis to determine what has changed. Organically growing the rules allows existing players to quickly and easily identify the changes. The issue is that this is not so good for new players. It can even be an issue for experienced players who may have forgotten one of those all-important special rules in a game, which is one reason why special rules are generally a poor design feature of any rules design unless resolved or compensated with extensive uh, examples, ref cross-referencing and well thematic design of rules. The rules references will be visible as much as possible in each slide. The rules reference uses the version 2019 of the rules. As normal with my videos, a quick caveat. All distances are centimetres, assuming you're using 15mm figures. The word player turn is used instead of the word bound. The word element is used instead of the word unit, which in the rules is a single base of figures. I will only be covering a version 1 DBN combat system, not the attrition system. In DBN, artillery elements represent heavier pieces such as 9-pounders or 12-pounder guns. These would have been held at core level rather than battalion or divisional level. Smaller pieces are built into the line infantry elements. In principle, this is a good design feature and the rules do allow you to field those smaller battalion regimental guns of 3-pounder and 4-pounders if you so wish. The issue is many armies also use six pounders at core level as well, particularly the Prussians. The French also like to concentrate their pieces together into grand batteries when Napoleon felt like doing it. But as it turns out, these are issues are only minor and the army lists and rules pretty much give you what you need when considering artillery to have a good game. The only issue I noticed in the rules was how artillery seemed to almost resemble modern indirect fire weapons. The all-so-important hill on each side of the playing area, which is used by the artillery to range over the bulk of the battlefield. I remember watching some early videos from the US which used what I think were early rules or home version of rules of DBN, which allowed artillery to make minor adjustments without command points and their effect and no effect on their ability to fire. I'm unable to see how that is possible based on my reading of version 2.1, but at the time it did concern me when I viewed those videos. DBN makes a lot of effort in minimising this, this effect, at least version 2.1, but it does nonetheless exist. I suspect there is a scale issue at work here, which I will cover in more detail later, but regardless, the rules as they stand offer the, a player a very good game indeed. In most cases, the type of artillery that is available is rather straightforward. Horse artillery, foot artillery and battalion guns. But one point which did puzzle me was the use of NA, which I assumed meant Napoleonic artillery. This can be found in the army list and in the combat results table, and I'm uncertain what the difference between NA and FA is. One theory I had was NA means either foot artillery or horse artillery, and when Foot artillery, or FA is mentioned specifically, it only refers to foot artillery. This is the interpretation I ended up using, but perhaps other players have a better theory of this mysterious NA symbol. Now, this video is basically broken up into two parts. The first part, which we'll be covering now, will be covering the specific rules associated with artillery. In the second part, we'll be putting these rules all together to provide some examples of how artillery could be used and things to watch out for. Most elements capable of fire combat can move during the phasing movement phase and then conduct fire combat during the same phasing fire combat phase. Foot artillery cannot conduct fire combat in the player turn it moves, however. Horse artillery is not under this restriction and is similar to musketeers or yaga or any other fire combat element. Artillery, that is both horse artillery and foot artillery, which has recoiled, cannot conduct fire combat in the following fire combat phase. 
Thus, if it's recoiled in its own player turn, it cannot fire in the subsequent non-phasing fire combat phase. If the recoil occurred in the non-phasing player turn, it cannot fire in the following phasing fire combat phase. Which means that uh, probably there's no restrictions in the next case of moving it around because you can't fire anyway. Artillery, that is horse artillery and foot artillery, on a road in bad going may not fire, even if it's not moving. Clearly it's in some sort of convoy, thus in not in a position to fire. The wording of the rule is a bit confusing, but I'm pretty, pretty certain that, that my interpretation is the correct meaning. Look at case 8.13 if you wish to check. Artillery cannot enter bad going unless spe otherwise specified or unless on a road. Artillery can move through a NLF and BUA, but apart from this I'm not certain what type of bad going it is able to travel through. Artillery can only cross a river at a ford or bridge, and steep hills and vineyards are impassable to artillery except via road. Where it becomes significant is for recoils, as impassable terrain causes a recoiled element to be destroyed. When artillery moves through olive groves, movement is reduced to 2.5 centimetres. I presume this is the example of artillery being able to move through a type of bad going. Artillery can conduct a retire move, that is move backwards, at no penalty. This means a foot artillery can move backwards 5 centimetres if it so desires. Of course, it could not conduct a fire combat in the same player turn as a result of this move. Also, artillery moving up a hill for any part of their move have their maximum movement allowance reduced by 2.5 centimetres. When artillery is firing at enemy elements in marsh or soft sand, it cannot take advantage of the minus one modifier applied to the firing target when the range is 7.5 centimetres or less and the terrain is considered as bad going beyond 7.5 centimetres which means the artillery suffers a minus two modifier. This is due to the ground type, as explained in the rules. Artillery on a higher elevation is able to conduct fire combat against an enemy element inside a BUA or NLF, which is not garrisoned or occupied. Howitzers can do this as well at the same elevation as the BUA and NLF. Foot artillery on a hill or contour can only fire over 15 centimetres if on the ridge line of the hill or the forward edge of the plateau. It needs to be at the midpoint or beyond of the midpoint of any hill in order to maximise its range. Artillery can conduct over, overhead fire as long as it and its target is on a higher ele elevation than the intervening troops, with some minor restrictions. This probably allows artillery on a hill to fire at enemy artillery on a hill. Artillery, like other elements capable of fire combat, must fire at the closest eligible enemy element up to a range of 7.5 centimetres. However, beyond this range, it can fire at any enemy element within range and fire arc it so desires. Artillery cannot fire on commanders or baggage trains which are further than 7.5 centimetres away. If artillery is in close combat, it cannot claim the tactical factor for firing within 7.5 centimetres, which is the canister effect. This normally reduces the enemy's factor by minus one when it's a fire combat. This certainly does not apply for close combat. The uh, Fire combat or fire support rules is just slightly unclear, but my interpretation is artillery can provide fire support to any element as long as there is no enemy element within 7.5 centimetres of it. If this is the case, it must conduct fire combat at the closer enemy element. See case 8.7 if you wish to check my, check my interpretation, but, I'm, but make sure you also look at case 8.3 and case 8.13. Artillery which is in close combat and unable to fire at its attacker because of its arc or previous movement suffers a minus two to its combat factor. I have to assume this applies if contacted in the flank and rear as that is outside of its arc and of course it occurs if the artillery moves and is otherwise unable to conduct or sorry if the artillery recoils and is unable to fire the following player turn which could be an enemy uh, player turn. Artillery cannot initiate close combat 
foot artillery cannot provide close support, but horse artillery can provide close support. Well, I hope the first part of the video wasn't uh, particularly boring as we were basically going through the rules. Basically what I did was I found every single rule relating to the topics which are shown in the header, put them all together to give you a consolidated view, uh, which I hope makes it easier to understand what artillery restrictions or artillery special rules there are and how it affects tactics. The second part of the video will cover the uses of artillery. I'm assuming all players are familiar with the basics, and this is more a tactics section. This shows a typical 60 cm square playing area with a hill at each player edge and an artillery element on that hill. While in this case the artillery elements cannot fire at each other, they can certainly cover the bulk of their player side. Obviously you need to factor firing arc, so if a player has to wheel the artillery element, this would preclude it from firing in the same phasing player term. But apart from this, we can see the power of artillery that are deployed on a hill. If the hills were within 25 centimeters of each other, the artillery could fire at each other as well. Artillery, like other firing elements, have a firing arc which consists of a 12 centimeter wide rectangle as can be seen here. This represents everything directly in front of the element and one element with each side. To change the firing arc requires the artillery to move, specifically wheeling. This shows a 45 degree wheel, each of which represents a move of about two centimeters. As artillery can retire or move backwards at no penalty, it simply reverses this move to get back to its original direction or position. It can even do a 90 degree wheel, which represents a move of under 5 centimetres. Of course, during the player turn this wheel occurs, no direct combat or no fire combat can occur, but it can conduct fire combat in the following enemy's player turn. Clearly, the enemy knows which way it's pointing, so it can try and move its elements out of the way, but this all costs command points and is not done lightly. One tactic which I've used is the grand battery on a hill. Now I know a optimal grand battery is two elements, but I often use three. Now this means a player can project a massive amount of firepower across the battlefield or playing area. However, you need to be careful about fire arcs. In this case, only the center Prussian musket element is eligible to be targeted by all three artillery elements. But the centre element can be hit with an FCF for 3 and a plus 2 for fire support, which gives it a reasonable chance of causing a retire, or even possibly a destruction. A better target would be enemy cavalry with an FCF for 3, which means the grand battery with, with a roll of 3 means if cavalry roll is 1, it's eliminated. Not a large chance, but still a concern to any player. The Grand Battery is most effective at clearing NLFs and I assume BUAs, although close combat is always the better option in those cases. The issue with this is wheeling is more difficult, with a 22 degree wheel possible but no greater. You, can, you always want to ensure that this remains as a single formation, as moving all three elements individually will be unwise because it uses us up a lot of command points. You're probably better off separating your artillery in that case. This is mostly viable if playing a large game, such as a 36 point game. I often play an attack defend scenario with 36 points attacking, 24 points for 12 game turns, and then either a 12 or 24 point reinforcement or uh, army arriving. Such a game would use a larger playing area, at least 90 centimeters wide, if not 120 centimeters. So the ability to dominate the whole front line is not as great in this particular situation, but um, I do find these grand batteries very useful in taking out LLFs, which I use as geographic victory points. Another tactic is use our trusty artillery elements as long range support. In this case, the two artillery elements are providing a minus two against the Prussian element, giving the French musketeer a good possibility of forcing a recall or even an elimination if the die rolls are lucky enough Artillery, which is very close up, inflicts a minus one against any enemy element in a fire combat. But while useful as a defense tactic, it's not wise for your foot artillery to get this close to anything. The advantage of artillery is range, best to remain as far away from danger as possible. Horse artillery is probably best not employed on a hill. It's best employed as long range mobile support, staying as far away from enemies as possible. 
Saying that the saying that the minus one against an enemy element with support from friendly elements can result in some rather favourable fire combat results. At FCF of three against a musket of FCF of four, both are now at a fire factor of three. With two supporting elements, there is a reasonable chance of getting a two to one result. You'll almost certainly get a recall. Once again, targeting cavalry is optimal in this case, although cavalry move a cavalry move is rather long, so it's tricky getting this right without risking and getting in close combat with that damn cavalry. As long as there is a, a one element wide gap in your front line, and remember if it's even a one millimeter less than one element wide, according to the rules, you cannot fire through it. The horse artillery can provide fire support through this gap or ensure an enemy element cannot provide fire support in turn. In this example, it's ensuring a French element cannot provide fire support. I'm assuming this is the correct interpretation of the rules. If any of the two Prussian elements at the bottom are forced to retire, then the French can launch a close assault against the isolated element. This is a general concept and the specifics are more nuanced, but it's all about breaking up the enemy line. Once you do that, you're in a good position to dominate the situation. One thing you should absolutely attempt to do is avoid being contacted by enemy cavalry, as we'll see here. If the guns are able to be fired, which will be the case if horse artillery, the FCF is 3, which is the same as the cavalry element. If foot artillery are not able to fire, then it's FCF is 2, which is not good. Looking at the FCF 3 example, the artillery will do well if its die roll is equal to or greater than the cavalry. This all results in the cavalry recalling, which is not very good for the um, fo following play term as the horse artillery can now fire at it at close range. However, if I own the artillery, I would run away as quickly as possible, so this is not really a real risk. On the other hand, if the artillery loses and recoils, it's in big trouble. The cavalry maintains contact and the artillery is destroyed. There is an evade rule, but this is for the attrition combat system, and I'm only dealing with the version 1 DBN standard combat system, thus it's not an option. Another thing to avoid is Jager or skirmishing infantry, which may only have a piddly FCF of 2, but which have a 10 centimetre range. And actually, even if they're within the 7.5 centimetre range of artillery, are not affected by canister or being in close range of the artillery. Thus, if within 7.5 centimetre and the closest element, the artillery now has to focus on this poor quality target. While it's more likely the artillery will force a recoil on the Arga, the Arga can keep on conducting fire combat, depending on its range, and if it recoils, so what? While if the artillery recoils, it may find itself unable to fire for a player turn, which could allow possibly a cavalry somewhere that's um, within movement range to come storming out and meeting the artillery in contact. Again, uh, you know, depends on the nuances of the situation, etc. So we come to a close of my Part 6 DBM training video, in this case providing an in-depth view of how artillery, or an in-depth view of artillery and how they're used. This is not really a beginner's video, and my apologies for the assumptions I have used rather than specific rules related references, but in this case, in most cases, my assumptions are quite minimal and I'm pretty certain they're reasonably accurate. The rules concerning artillery is rather complete, however they are scattered around the rules books. Apart from this, the main issue with using artillery is understanding its strengths and weaknesses, which is the fun part of any set of rules. This video is based on my examples book for DBN, which can be found in Kriegspiel IO group site. Just go to Napoleonic, or go to Files, Napoleonic Rules, and select DBN, you'll find it. Then you can see that on Emma Verhill, Hamatlin, Zukapfen.